Um, also, this is still kind of, it's very fresh. This is an ongoing project where basically um, we finished the large section of our filming, um, but we're also still doing other interviews and, um, and we're very much sort of in the middle of the edit. So this is still kind of, yeah, very much an ongoing project. So, um, Firstly, just kind of, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, Let's see, this is my first ever PowerPoint presentation, actually, so this is um, yeah, probably, probably going to be a bit of a nightmare. But yeah, so uh, this is me. <laughs> um, yeah, James Dean. Um, <laughs> so uh, so I, grew up, I grew up locally. Um, I live, lived on the, the levels all my life, a um, little village called Alla, and went to college in Taunton. Um, it often gets a boo in Bridgewater, but... Um, then I went off and did a degree in film and television studies, um, which was fun, um, but I, it wasn't really real worldly enough. I didn't get kind of much out of the actual experience in terms of then going on and, and working. So um, two or three years after, um, after I did my degree, I went and um, did a bursary placement at the engine room. So that's the engine room. Uh, <laughs> which is an accessible, <laughs> accessible community centre <laughs> located in Bridgewater's High Street. Um, yeah, yeah, funnily enough, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, I mean, it, it was I came and worked for three months, um, helping out on the courses that were run, various projects that, that were done here, um, and essentially, it was kind of the first opportunity to really get hands-on with sort of how well how well real world really how kind of media pro projects were run um obviously it's a very different world from you know big feature films where you have you know hundreds of people on set this it's very much kind of hands-on you, you you know you get involved as a filmmaker you're working in all aspects of production and and generally i kind of yeah just learned how to work within the media industry during those kind of three months and and the sort of years that followed basically picked up various projects and it was kind of an incredibly sort of valuable experience for me really um picture of us looking happy. <laughs> um, in 2008 I set up um, Level Films with um, two guys that I met through the engine room. So there's Alex Richardson, back when the, uh, yeah, very thoughtful. Um, Alex was essentially the first guy through the door when the engine rooms opened and um, yeah we kind of just talked about doing things for quite a while and then eventually got around to doing something a few years later along with um, Matt Crocker, um, as us in Cornwall. Um, so yeah, so we, we established Level Films in 2008, basically working on various corporates and promos um, for all sorts of different sort of companies. I mean, we're able to list Nokia, Xerox, um, Tesco, Wolverine, Worldwide, Inc., which is a massive kind of shoe brand, and not necessarily all very big projects. Some are very, very small that eight to ten people might have seen if, if we're lucky, but you know, still the, the kind of the logos are on the website, so it looks good. Um, 2009, we got an office where we worked very hard. Um, and yeah, that kind of that basically gave us a kind of pretty well, just a base really to kind of sell ourselves from. So um, we all work as freelancers under Level Films, um, but then a lot of the time we're working together as um, yeah, on various projects. Um, anyway, um, so in 2009, on one of the projects, um, we, were working, we were working for a shoe brand called Cushy, and we went down to, to meet one of their brand ambassadors, who's a chap called Mitch Corbett. Um, he's a surfer down, uh, he's based in Newquay, um, and yeah, basically we got, let's see, I'll just play um, a little section of the, uh, the film. The surfing element of the brand is an area where we've always had fun, but it's an opportunity Mitch Corbett is one of the best surfers in the UK. It's actually right to say that Mitch has a cushy life. He loves it. He'd be great at it. He's spending his time doing what he loves. He's still young. He's 21 and he's got a lot more to give. I couldn't imagine it any other way. Like, there's no way I'd ever move from the coast. You don't need much to go surfing. You can surf all the way to the west of the west of the whole way to the border and get out of it. I love it in England, I love just going on like a good little track, looking for some waves with friends and then just scoring a spot and just hanging out a beach all day basically. You get to learn how to read waves, I, I know it sounds funny, but you do get to learn to read them like a book. 
the best way to pretty much when there's storms are in anyway, so like you end up just going down in hail and sleet and all sorts, getting your heart racing a bit. I've landed on a few rocks and hurt myself quite a bit, like it's all about being calm and just having the respect for you. That's quite abrupt. That's men of fade. Um, yeah, so essentially kind of a couple of days filming down there and we had kind of a great time. We just really enjoyed it. Surfing turns out it's quite a cool kind of way of life. Um, and basically we quickly sort of became interested in, in the world that Mitch lives in, um, of the kind of the lifestyle and just living for, um, for the swells and looking at charts constantly to see what the winds are doing, whether it's blowing in the right direction, whether the waves are going to be big enough. And, um, and it's just particularly with surfing in this country as well, quickly realised there's a lot of kind of eccentricities and kind of well with the extremities of conditions basically the 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 waves are at their best when the weather's at its worst kind of thing and it gets cold and miserable and that's that's when they kind of they they thrive um and so we kind of we we sort of very quickly got interested in the kind of the characters that must have sort of gone before basically the guys that would have sort of started off this you know who who were the first people to get in the freezing cold waters and you know what what do they have to kind of deal with really um and um, also, we, we both happen to kind of share a love of the same sort of feature documentary, kind of our, our favourite documentary, basically. And I've got the teaser which I've um, downloaded. Um, I won't say illegally. <laughs> borrowed, borrowed off the internet. To, yeah. <laughs> So that's um, that's Riding Giants, which was, I'm um, basically it's um, it's an incredibly exciting film with great production values, and it's also very kind of accessible for for us as kind of non-surfers. We both sort of watched it and loved it, and just kind of, you know, really into the characters and the people that were speaking on screen. And so, th and that that's as far as documentaries go. That was that's always sort of been a bit of a blueprint for the sort of thing we like to make. Um, and so, it just so happens that we that we kind of worked on on this idea. Um, and it happened to be in the surfing world as well, and it's again the same sort of things. It's an exciting world, and and we we haven't got the same sort of things. We haven't got eighty foot waves and you know things like that. But there is still kind of there's there's the excitement, there's the adrenaline, there's um, but there's different things with British surfing as well. There's the waiting and you know anticipation because often often the waves aren't there. Often the waves you think are going to be there, but then they don't come. And you know there's kind of there's a whole different sort of set of things with with British surfing. But, um, but yeah, so we can. As I say, this is kind of, kind of a blueprint, but not something we, we could kind of just copy because it's the whole different thing that we'd, we'd be making. Um, so we did a lot of research. We spoke to a lot of people. We read um, the few books that were out there and, and looked sort of into all sort of the archives and magazines. Um, and basically, we, kind of, we came up for the, the idea for The Endless Winter, which is the title is actually based on kind of a very iconic um, surfing film called The End of Summer, which... Um, we were a bit wary of because it's kind of it's it's up there as like the surfing film, and so we didn't we didn't want to be kind of trying to say oh yeah we're just like the the end of summer 
So we want it to be a very British take and a bit of kind of a tongue in cheek. So it's yeah, the end of winter, a very British surf movie. So um, so yeah, so basically we kind of we made we formed the idea. We we wrote a pitch about the the kind of film that we'd we'd like to make basically, um, and and then we found that it hadn't been done before, which was what really surprised us. No one had actually been and made a documentary about British surfing even though there's kind of a lot of stories, a lot of characters, a lot of interest there. So, so we put a pitch together um, and we, we then started to look for funding options. Um, one of the early places we went to was Southwest Screen, basically with the hope that we'd kind of be able to get signposted into some, um, or some idea of where there might be funding opportunities, whether it's just for development or whether it's for actually making the film or um, essentially kind of how we could go about getting money for this. Um, Unfortunately, the session with Southwest Screen turned the, the chat we were seeing there turned more into a kind of quite a negative half an hour critique of the project. Um, there wasn't a lot said about what we needed to kind of talk about. It was just he basically didn't think the idea was very good and kind of told us in, in a roundabout way, um, which was kind of, it was, yeah, that was a bit tough. There's a couple of days then after that where we, you know, we were questioning it as well. It wasn't, certainly wasn't what we, what we wanted from that meeting, but. After that, we kind of came out of it and thought, no, sorry, okay, we still, we've got faith in the idea. This is a project. Essentially, it's a project we want to make because it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, we think we'll have a real good sort of product at the end of it. So we decided to go and make, um, basically self-fund a teaser. Um, we had Mitch on board. We wanted to base the film around two surfers on a road trip, kind of visiting key spots um, in the country and then tying kind of historical stories with it. So we had Mitch on board and then we got um, a mate of his called um, Alan Stokes, who's actually Animal's kind of number one pin-up guy. Um, and they were both sort of really into the idea of the project and it's something very different for certainly British surf movies. Um, and so yeah, they were, they were sort of keen to be on board. So um, yeah, so I so said we, this was in June 2009 um, and yeah, we let's say self-funded so we essentially hired a, a VW camper van because it seemed like that's what the road trip should be taken in um, <laughs> and yeah went down and did a few kind of bits and pieces with with the guys um, so so we've got a few stills this is just us in the back of the, the van with them driving <laughs> and then we we picked out essentially three or four key characters that we thought we could kind of do interviews with and then base that kind of that teaser around. So essentially, we we were looking to make the film in mini. So it wouldn't it wouldn't even be a trailer like the Riding Giants one. It would more just be a little sort of cross section of the film, just kind of dipping in. Um, yeah, let's say with the, these key figures. And to save money, we stayed in the van as well, which was cosy. <laughs> um, yeah. So this this is the teaser then that we put together. Um, it's kind of finished by about August two thousand and nine. Um, so I'll play that one. We're simple people that just basically survive and hunt for good waves. You do anything you can to, to be at that spot when it's pumping. It's a cold country. You wouldn't expect there to be such a big surfing population. No one really knows what we do and why we do it. When someone's had a really good surf somewhere, or they've had a really bad wipeout, you just you can live every moment through their kind of excitement. You don't get that with any other sport, you know. You can relate to all these different eras. Almost every weekend, when the swell, tides, and waves are right, surfers arrive in groups to further master the mysteries of this unique sport. The first time I saw anybody standing up, it was just. Unbelievable. That's what hit me. It was just another first wave. It's almost like meditating in a way, you know, a semi religious sort of feeling to get out of it. Can't beat it. No way in the world. Oh, yes. I can't believe now how we managed to go in the sea in January and February with those really useless wetsuits that we used to have. We used to wear a woolly jump off under them. It's quite primitive, you know, I think like, you know, the boards we had in those days were pretty crap. We know that in a 
attract a certain element because it means beach parties, mostly meeting girls. You know, it's an exciting time to be a teenager. Life comes second and surfing comes third. In many ways, it was an era of social unrest. People were being very different. Surfers were not running away from life on land and in the ocean. It becomes very much a quest for the perfect way. It was really the final frontier. We came back and surfers always got big money, so you tell all your friends and then everybody wants to go out there. And now, of course, it's recognised as being one of the best waves in the world. It's undeniably a world-class wave. Just a bit cold. These surfers <coughs> travelled from the south of England to the cold north of Scotland, searching for the holy grail of world-class waves in Britain. Fifty years later, we're going to trace their steps. We'll be following the swells north, catching waves of Britain's best surfers on the way. They paved the way for the modern surfer, and the beat goes on. Should say surf movie. But, um, yeah, so we we managed to get um, an animator called Simon Ball on board as well. We with the same kind of hope that obviously we'd be able to kind of use that to get funding to make kind of the the bigger film. Um, as I said, that was that was um, over two years ago. Um, but that, that meant then we had something at least to start kind of showing to people and to try and kind of you know get get the funds in place. Um, essentially, we kind of we found out that the surfing world is it's a wash with different sponsors. There's lots of kind of companies that are that are into it and kind of really see it as a kind of a good market for them. But at the same time, it's not really a wash with much money. So um, so we kind of we looked down various avenues of kind of partial funding. Whether we could the guys have both got kind of plenty of sponsors, and so we kind of approached a few of those to see if they'd be interested in doing. You know, sponsoring a, a portion. If there's any way of sort of working that, as well as people like the National Trust, who um, they've got um, a surfer on their books, and, and they sponsor Stokesy as well. So they've they've kind of got a bit of a vested interest, and we thought maybe there's a steer that we could kind of do with them. So we were looking at sort of various kind of avenues to try and kind of get funders on board, basically. Um, as well as at that point, we started trying to get in touch with Stokesy's main sponsor, which was Animal. Um, which proved to be a bit of a, a, an ongoing saga, but I'll come back to that. Um, essentially, kind of, well, inevitably, we got kind of sidetracked by paying work. Um, this was obviously just costing us as opposed to kind of earning us money, so we had to kind of get diverted. And then uh, other things came along as well, which also distracted us <laughs> for, for a little bit. That's more what well, distracted me. Um, <laughs> um, but then we kind of um, came back to it again. Um, it was, uh, I guess, about a year ago, so the, the summer of last year. Again, trying to sort of follow up on that, that animal link. Um, various people kept kind of coming and going. We get, we get given a contact and seem to kind of almost have a meeting in place, and then they leave. But um, eventually, in um, December of last year, we managed to get in to have um, a sit-down meeting with Animal. As it turned out, it was a day after the Christmas party and a couple of days before they went on holiday. But all the same, it was the meeting essentially couldn't have gone any better. It was ev everything we were kind of showing them and saying about the film, they were kind of really sort of interested in. And also what we found really interesting was that they'd, I think a few days before, had a meeting with their, um, their PR agency who said to them, they need to be pulling money out of events, where they sponsored events, and putting it into film, because I guess you access more people through film, which obviously I kind of suggested was very good advice, and yeah, maybe they should uh, definitely sort of <laughs> follow up on that. Um, and so, yeah, so it was a very, very positive meeting. We kind of, we, we came out sort of very hopeful that something could kind of happen with that. Um, but unfortunately, kind of over the next three months of emails and following up and trying to sort of chase up whether anything was going to happen, um, it's quite quiet before eventually we, we sort of found out that the budget that we were looking for, which at that stage was only to cover going out and shooting the actual film, so we weren't looking for the full budget to get it filmed, edited, distributed, and all the archive covered. We just wanted to get the film shot, and then hopefully we could get some money from, and actually we'd get paid from selling it on afterwards. Um, but that still, that, that amount that we needed was too much for them to sort of draw from a marketing budget. Essentially, they were kind of look, they'd have to generate that money out of their budgets, which wasn't wasn't really feasible. Um, so then, um, again, got distracted by, um, by paying work and a few other things. Matt having his child. Um, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but not long after that, I was working um, on a project, a um, well, family connections project, which is for the engineering. Um, got chatting to Debbie, and Debbie suggested there's a, a couple links that maybe we should have a look at that might be kind of valuable. So the first of those was um, Placevine, um, which looked interesting, but I couldn't really get my head around it, just as a kind of... So yeah, Placevine is a web-based service that connects marketers and agencies to brand integration, branded entertainment, and product placement opportunities across film, television, and new media. Essentially, I think there's... Um, if, you've, if you've got a film, there's potentially there's some brands there that might... You know, or if you've got an idea for a film, you can kind of connect with brands through them, but it didn't seem that accessible. But then there was another one, um, Filmtree. Um, and so, again, a similar sort of thing, but it just seemed a bit more accessible. Basically, the, if you look on the About Us or the, the Who We Are, there's just a couple of guys on there. Um, and I think Debbie had seen him do a presentation just sort of a few weeks before. We, um, so we sent him an email. Didn't really expect to hear too much back too quickly. I think we went out and got some lunch. And by the time we came back, we'd missed a phone call um, from Ed Sharp, who is one of the, the partners of Filmtree. Um, he basically... Um, He's working on a project um, with Ford at the moment and, and the Sweeney. So there's a remake of the Sweeney being put together and Ford are involved and it's their ST is sort of going to be the main vehicle. And he happened to overhear on the project that um, the f they were looking for a project for Ford S-Max. And Ford S-Max is a car that's aimed at, um, well, it's a, it's aimed at a guy called Henri. He's their target market. He's aged 35 to 45 or something like that. He's... Um, He's a dad, he's an active dad, but he doesn't define himself by his family. Not that I've kind of intaken you know, too much of the information, but <laughs> <laughs> essentially he's, he's an active person who has kids and likes to go and do things on the weekend, and that includes surfing. And so they've, they've got an advert, a sort of cheesy-ish advert that was online that's basically this, this sort of dad going out and surfing with his kids. And, but they wanted something that could place the S-Max in the surfing world, and they want to see it in surfing car parks. Um, and so Ed had overheard this and he'd been sort of trawling through the internet looking for documentary projects and different ideas and he'd been drawing a, a, a blank basically and it just so happened that's when our email dropped in his inbox <laughs> and so he called us instantly. He was sort of pretty excited by the sound of it. So that was on um, yeah, May, 20th, May 28th that we, um, we contacted him. Um, then on June the 1st we went and we met Ed. Um, and we, we took our pitch into him. We thought we were kind of pitching to him. Um, as it was, it's just kind of an opportunity to kind of meet him. I think he was already kind of sold on the project and wanted to be taking it to, um, to, to Ford. Um, it, it was good that we did see him before the agencies because he kind of put us straight on budget ideas where we were still kind of talking about getting a budget to fund just filming the thing. Quickly it became that, you know, we can put a budget in place here to actually get the thing made, to get to pay people fairly and to actually kind of put, put the project together and then, then we'll look to release it to market. But essentially we weren't going to have to pay ourselves off of, you know, pro any sort of um, profits that might come in. So this, this, was the, the, um, this is what we gave him. So just to quickly sum this, so um, from the outset and from, there's a little piece of paper that, that we took into the... Um, into the animal meeting that just had a few notes on it of what it was that we were going to kind of sell to them. And we always had it in mind that we'd sell a feature-length documentary as well as a number of um, webisodes. Um, so the web episodes would be kind of little snippets or little chapters from the film itself that would then kind of give... Um, it, the way we saw it, it would give the brand some kind of exposure at regular kind of intervals as opposed to pinning everything on this one-end film. We struggled to kind of work out why a, f a brand would want to put all their money into a feature film when you can't guarantee that it's, you know, it's going to have the audience at the end of it. So we were just kind of keen to find ideas to keep kind of the, the name out there, basically. Um, and so, yeah, the web episodes was kind of the main sort of vehicle we had for that. Um, so this was, this was our pitch we took to Ed. We went and um, pitched to two of Ford's agencies um, a week later on June the 8th. Um, we, we went, it, so it's Mindshare and Ogilvy, both of which are, they're massive, massive sort of agencies. Um, we went to the, um, the Mindshare offices, which um, they actually share with Google. I think Google have three or four floors in the building. They've got one, but this is kind of a massively impressive building. So it's a bit different from the picture of the office I showed you that we work in currently. Um, Ed sort of put a few tweaks to the, to the pitch. So he changed a couple lines. 
and rebranded the, the front page slightly. So, <laughs> so Film Tree and Level Films. We requested that perhaps we could have our logo a little bit bigger. <laughs> so we're still kind of there and involved in, in the pitch. Um, but then, the, yeah, the, the, the pitch went really well. So the, the two agencies very sort of on board and you could see their minds kind of working sort of very quickly to think about how SMAX could kind of be involved in this and, um, and you know, how, how they could sell it for them, basically. As we left, there was just kind of, there was one significant problem. Okay, this is like top five best things about my van for a server. So, for this van, it's got onboard computers. Right, so you get the idea. Basically, Stokes is sponsored by Mercedes Vito Sport. Um, we're, pitching, <laughs> <laughs> we're pitching to Ford S Max, and it's the first thing they came up was the five best things about Stokes' van. Um, thankfully, <laughs> I mean, we'd, we'd, spoken, we'd spoken to him about the possibility with Ford and he'd kind of spoken to, um, to Animal and to Mercedes as well and um, the way, well for our kind of guilt, the way it worked out was that he had to pull out from a project as opposed to us having to kind of have a pretty awkward conversation. Um, but, you know, it's all good, we've, sort of, we've seen him a few times and he's kind of, yeah, still sort of friendly with this. But yeah, that was, that was kind of awkward. So we then, we still wanted to base it around two surfers doing a road trip. We wanted a kind of a bit of a buddy movie that would be just a little side sort of issue that would then sort of take us into all these different sort of meetings with characters. So we had to kind of find another character, um, which we did pretty quickly, to be honest. Um, so we've got a guy called Mark Harris, whose nickname's Igor, which we thought sounded quite exciting anyway. Um, there's not a lot of reason for his nickname to be Igor, and he's not sort of... Russian. I was expecting some big hulking Russian guy, but he's a typical blonde, curly head, nuky surfer. Um, but yeah, so that was anyway. So that was June the eighth. Two weeks later, um, we had another meeting with the agencies. This time, instead of it being just two people from the agencies, we had a third agency in the room as well. And I think there's about 15 people, plus still just me and Matt with our idea. Um, and we were talking about the pitch that we were going to be making to Ford, and so it kind of basically got developed again. Um, and so then this is, this is why I've done a PowerPoint presentation today, really. I've, we've just kind of been totally immersed in this corporate world where they, yeah, they love them. Um, <laughs> but so they, they changed our little pitch, our one-page pitch that we'd done into, um, no, into um, a 17-page deck, they call it. I think that's a cooler way of saying PowerPoint presentation. Um, Oh, is, that, is that what it is? Uh, okay, well, there we go, that's good. All the, we've, we've had to learn quite, quite a few new phases. Essentially, the three agencies, we've got um, Ogilvy uh, Project Managing, we've got Mindshare, who are above the line, and we've got Wonderman, who are below the line, which essentially above the line means anything in print um, and that sort of thing, and, and uh, below the line is just online bits and pieces. So that was our kind of... We just nodded through a lot of the terms that were coming out in the meetings because... I'm not that into corporate jargon and speak, and so if we didn't understand it, we'll just get a hazy face instead of asking questions about it. Um, but yeah, so we went into um, the, the meeting on the 22nd with Ford, where we pitched to two of Ford's kind of um, big cheeses, and again, that went very well. So this was just um, three weeks after contacting Ed, essentially. We were then with Ford. They were very much on board. They really liked it. They were thinking... You could see all the ideas sort of going around about how the, this could get involved or how they could get involved in the um, um, in the project and sell the S Max as part of, of part of the brand. But what was what was really great that was coming through was that they were very very keen that the film maintained credibility. So um, so the, with with say the logo that we've been put, been putting up, you may have noticed it just says Ford S Max presents. So we haven't even got this big glossy blue Ford logo. We've essentially just got them in kind of, well, just wanted to maintain the credibility. So they are going to be involved in the project, but they don't want to kind of oversell it as, you know, this is their big, shiny kind of um, Ford S Max they're driving around in. And up to this point, that's still been exactly the same. So um, the website, which I'll show you a bit later, again, it's got quite subtle branding. So um, it's not full of Ford, Ford, Ford. It's there, but, you know, it's not in your face. And, and that's, been, that's been great. You know, we kind of, I was saying to Deb earlier, we, we weren't sure quite how many limbs we were going to have to sort of chuck at the project to, to get it to go. You know, we were ready to kind of give them an arm and a leg, and as it is, we're still kind of, you know, fully, <laughs> fully limbed up. Um, but, um, 
So after that, that meeting on the 22nd, where we thought essentially we were just a few days away from a definite yes, things slowed down quite a lot as all the agencies kind of got involved and tried to work out exactly how this was going to work for Ford. And that's kind of understandable, really. They, they're investing kind of um, not just money, obviously, in the film, but in the whole project as, as a whole. So the agencies were going to kind of have a big share to then make sure they could go and um, publicise this, this um, film and get the most out of it. Um, and so they were working to put a strategy in place. Um, so, yeah, so we, we kind of we got a little bit lost in whether it was going to be happening or not. Um, but then I asked if we could have a car for pre-production, and they said yes. And so that was kind of seemed a good sign. I was driving around in a Ford S-Max. Um, and so I felt like, yeah, okay, they're, they're kind of, they're on board here. Um, otherwise, it would have been a bit of a sort of a strange thing to do. Um, just to kind of slightly break away. Um, Contracts um, was kind of an interesting point. There's a, there's a chap we're working, in, working with at the moment who's um, working on another project where he's entered a film into a, a competition, basically. It's quite um, a prestigious competition with a big money prize at the end of it. But he's just had the contract through from that competition. And the, kind of, the things that were in there were kind of, well, beyond belief, basically. They, kind of, they stipulated in this contract that they wanted him to sign that they'd own all the footage in the film, they'd own the film, they'd own all the, all the rushes and everything kind of around that. Um, they could also use his name in any way they wanted, so they could speak on behalf of him, give statements as him. Um, and if they wanted, they could change his name to whatever they wanted it to be, as well as changing the film title. So essentially, he was giving away everything. Um, so he's kind of said, well, no, he's going to send back his own contract. But anyway, we were kind of, we were wary of similar stories with the contracts and didn't want to be giving up, you know, everything. We wanted to sort of still maintain, the, again, this is lucky, there'd been a bit, a bit of breathing space. Probably that first meeting with Ed when we went in, we may well have said, have everything. You know, <laughs> you know just, we wanted to make the film, if we could get a bit of money, brilliant. Um, but, you know, a, sort of a month or so of kind of learning and breathing space and quickly realised actually we can kind of retain you know, a lot of the, sort of the ownership on this project as well as, you know, working, working with Ford. Um, and what surprised us was that they asked us to go away and write the contract, um, which was a bit of a blow because it meant we had to pay for solicitors to write a contract, but at the same time meant we had first crack at getting it exactly as we wanted it to be. Um, and things haven't kind of changed too much from that. There's been a little sort of to and froing, but essentially the kind of the contract something we're very happy with. So that's, you know, that's been kind of pretty good for us, really. Um, so, so this is um, basically the, what the agencies that have been working on the website for us. Again, so you can see, you can see the branding, as I was saying. So we have got, we've got the Ford logo down the bottom of the page, and we've got the Ford S-Max Presents on the top of the logo, which is, you know, that, that's what's being used in most places. So people can see Ford are there, but it's not sort of too in your face. And then there's, um, there's a link to the S-Max as part of that. Um, oh. I think I've lost one of the slides, but it's not a problem. Um, but yeah, so as time was ticking on, um, eventually we, we got kind of a sign-off on the invoice, um, which was before contracts being signed, three weeks before production. So we'd actually set our production dates, which th they were primarily based around the... Um, the date of the seven ball in um, Gloucester. Um, there was a good, a good ball was going to be going on, or like a four-star ball. It's done like up to five-star ratings, and um, I think it was September the 25th. And so we wanted to get a kind of a couple of weeks filming out the way, then go to the ball. The guys were going to surf the ball for a few days, um, and then that that was essentially our only kind of date parameter. But it meant that we wanted to get things going anyway. Um, so we had our, our date set in mind. We got the yeah the invoice signed off three weeks before, um, which meant we could go to the bank and say, look, they're definitely going to pay us some money. Can we have a bit of an overdraft so we can go and pay for accommodation and kit and all these other bits and pieces, which was all fine. Um, and the, ch the first check actually came through a week after we'd been on our five-week shoot and spent all that kind of overdraft. So <laughs> it, was a bit, it was a bit nervy, but we kind of, uh, yeah, just about got through and the bank didn't get too angry with us. Um, Cool, so essentially, um, I just want to have a look at the, um, at the website for a minute. There we go. Can I ask what was the budget of that for you? Um, the, oh, just see we've got a new post gone up, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the budget um, 
essentially the, we were looking at 40,000 when we went to Animal that was to get the film made and um, yeah, as I said and after we'd been through the first meeting with Ed, Ed said you need to be more realistic about how it's going to get made and then even in with the agencies themselves, the agencies were saying well I think we should put more money into say music so as it is now the music budget's 40,000, the whole budget's in the realms of sort of 160, 170,000 which is you know, I mean for us that's, that's a massive leap but it's kind of, it all seems to kind of make sense and we're yeah, not too daunted by it um, and you know, and still kind of realistically in the kind of in Ford's world, this is still quite a small <laughs> project for them, which is yeah, frightening. As, and as I said, there's as much and a bit more again that's gone into what's happening around the film. So, yeah, that that in itself to kind of have a project with that much marketing that's going on or that much budget that's going on, sort of pretty well. I mean, it's, it's an awesome opportunity. We've always had belief in the idea, but to actually sort of have been able to kind of get in um, that that well, sort of yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, um, the website was put together. Um, there's also um, a sort of similar looking YouTube page that's hosting the various videos. Um, and, and there's, sorry, that's, um, there's been um, money sp spent on building a relationship with Empora.com, which is the world's largest action sports network and video platform, as it says. Um, and so Empora kind of, we, ha we haven't been involved in, in setting up any of this, but the, the contract that they've had has meant that um, we've, got, um, we've got our own page within the site. Apparently the, the, the traffic on the site is fantastic, apparently. You know, I'd, I'd say we haven't been sort of too involved in, in the big sale, but this is what the, one of the strategies that they, they came up with, with um, yeah, between the, the agencies and there should be there should be a link somewhere but there's not but right so that's that's our film episode one the crib of 66 and so part of the package is that we get um put in this editor's choice each one of our web episodes that we release and gets put in there for three weeks um gets promoted um and so the first teaser that we released um I think I got 50,000 views through um, Empora plus another sort of 10 or 15,000 through um, YouTube and Vimeo and other places where we're sort of pushing it out. Um, so, um, in terms of the actual, so I'll just quickly race through the, the actual production, then there's a, a few more sort of bits and pieces I'm, I'm just going to show you from the site. Um, so, the, the the main film and then was a five week road trip which was the two guys plus there was a crew of essentially six of us um, and we were, we'd been given our, our hero car which was um, a white shiny S-Max um, we'd been given a support car of another S-Max as well as a van as well um, so we had kind of all of us trawling around the country in these three vehicles which again small things like that were quite exciting <laughs> I, I drove here in the, the hero car today actually but it's um, parked around the corner but obviously that was just for effect as opposed to it being my family car for the time being um, <laughs> it does have to go back unfortunately um, so yeah so we did um, essentially five weeks of filming we did um, three or four days down in Cornwall um, then we sort of went home for the weekends and we did a couple of days in Brighton which is um, it's not renowned for big surf particularly but it's kind of it's quite an exciting place first time I've been to Brighton we had a great couple of days and yeah it was beautiful and sunny and so everyone was was out on the uh, the esplanade and the piers were both well not both one of them was burnt down the pier, the pier was busy and so it was just kind of everything that we wanted from Brighton which was just exciting and flat seas um, <laughs> so there wasn't any surfing to see which was kind of that's what it's meant to be about it's an exciting they're, they're real sort of pumped up surf crew when the surf's there they have to wait so long that they're kind of you know they're really sort of excited um then we went over to um to wales to the south southwest corner um to three or four days there and then we did a kind of two week um sort of road trip which was the seven ball up to the northeast then up to scotland um and then half the crew went up to the orkney islands as well and i think they'll be going back there hopefully at some point because um, there's, there's a new wave up there that the guys have discovered which kind of puts them at the forefront of British surfing it's um, through sort of towing surfing which is where you get jet skis towing them onto these big heavy waves that you can't really paddle onto because of the power of the wave um, but they've discovered this wave anyway and 
there is, there's a bit of footage of them and all you can kind of see is just cliff face and them on this wave and you realize they're getting pretty close and it's pretty scary but <laughs> that's sort of that's what they do because they love it um so yes yeah, so that was our, our five week sort of main road trip um we never expected to get surfing footage on that that um road trip but essentially because it's the wrong time of year and to be honest, we wanted to focus on the interviews. We wanted to get our story sections in place and meet the characters and do all that side of things um, and not sort of worry about them getting distracted because there's a great swell coming in. I was going to be pumping for stoked. Um, yeah, we wanted them to hopefully not have to worry about the surfing side of things as a distraction. Um, and so there's, they're filming surfing sections now as well as Matt and myself are going around doing a few other talking head interviews. So, so the road trips of characters that they've met are going to lead into different subject areas. We'll have talking heads, we'll have animation, archive, all kind of um, over the top of it as well. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll show you um, a few more clips. First of all, I'm just going to race through the first film that we released, um, which is a teaser. So this is... Um, Essentially, it's a remake of the, the teaser we saw before, so I'm not going to play it all in full. <laughs> so, um... It's a cold country. You wouldn't expect there to be such a big surfing population. And no one really knows what we do and why we do it. What makes the British surf scene unique is just waiting for the swells. It makes it even more special when, when you score one of these spots. And on the scale of it, it's some of the best barrels I've ever had in my life. Anyway. I feel very lucky to, to be a surfer in Britain. Definitely. So that's now Eagle who's in there in place of Stokes. So we go back into a similar section. Um, and I'll just... They were the first surfers, they were exploring the... Sorry, it's a bit loud. I'll just try and find a bit. For us, that's just trying to get the biggest barrels that we can find. They were the first surfers, they were exploring the coast. They can relate to what we're doing now. Setting off from Cornwall, we'll be travelling north to the rugged highlands. This is the end section, so this was a bit new. British surf pioneers. We want to meet the surfers that sparked our culture and lifestyle and understand what drove them into the icy cold British waters. They paved the way for our generation. And with areas of our coastline still uncharted by the surface, the beat goes on. Yeah. See, I don't know if you noticed a slight kind of um, substitution there of the, the, <laughs> the second character we had to lose, obviously the orange um, camper van that's pretty cool, and then yeah, that, that's the only bit where it's felt to me like we've really crowbarred it in there and literally that was just over the top of the, uh, the camper van, so... But, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, we, we were asked exactly what S-Max we wanted and to, we got a list of all the, sort of the bits and pieces and it's like, oh wow, okay, so we'll have this, this, this and this and then they said, okay, this is our demonstrator model, this is what you're going to be having. So no, we, we wouldn't have gone for orange, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, we didn't really get a say in it at all. Um, but yeah, so essentially, so this was released on October the 28th. I think we finished filming on um, October the 10th. So th this has been the sort of one thing with the webisodes. We've been obviously very keen to kind of jump through hoops as much as we can. But um, essentially, it's me and Matt that are editing it now. We will be getting other people involved further down the line when we get towards the, the sort of latter stages of the feature. But we're kind of, you know, we're, we're being pulled in quite a few directions now. So we're, we're trying to edit, edit down the feature sections as well as produce the webisodes and also we're still sort of working very heavily with the agencies and answering a lot of their questions and doing little jobs um, for them you know on, on various different things which you know it's still it's in no way a chore this is you know it's a fantastic project for us to be working on we're just you know loving it but it does mean that we're getting sort of yeah pulled sort of quite as I say sort of quite tight but so this this was to be released just over two weeks after we'd finished the road trip um, and we decided to keep it very similar and to base it around the original teaser that we'd made just because that original teaser had taken us three or four months to make and you know we'd put a lot of time into the edit and had faith in in the edit and so we thought actually it seems silly just to kind of throw all that away and then um <coughs> you know put something totally new together so we, we decided to kind of just pull out the camper van stokesy 
um, a few of the other bits and replace them with Eagle and, and the S Max and different bits and pieces. Um, but this has had, um, yeah, got a great reaction. So it's about 60,000 hits. The, um, all the British surf scene are kind of, they seem to be into it. Um, let's see, I've got um, a few figures. I say, I say all. Um, I won't read it out. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so there's a guy here, so right, you want me to buy quiver surfboards and drive C-Max, so he's got that bit wrong, it's an S-Max. Um, I like the way he signs it off, so my herpes. Um, <laughs> so so that, that's kind of, you know, they're, they're, but then there's 51 likes. You've got Magic Seaweed, we've got 272 likes. Um, this was only sort of posted on their Facebook page. Again, there's people in there that are unsure about it, but it's just, it seems to be within surfing what you look at, and a lot of the surfing videos, and they're just, there's a few people with kind of negative um, outlooks on things who um, and the way that surf, the surfing world seems to be brought up you have kind of competition surfers and then you have free surfers who do it for the love of it and they hate any kind of brands coming and being involved and obviously we're, you watch this and you see already that there's a few shots of the, the white S-Max in there and so there's people that are kind of questioning whether it's um, you know, whether it's genuine or whether this is just forward trying to come up with an idea to then, right we're going to dip our toes in but um, on the whole, on the whole, it's been <laughs> it, it's been good reactions. Oh. Um, Have you had any problems with that when you've been out shooting? No, this this is a thing. I mean, um, so I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't sort of make it clear earlier. Matt and myself aren't surfers. We've we've been surfing a few times. Um, yeah, Matt more than me. Um, but we we kind of thought that people were going to be quite um, quite funny about us coming into their world, you know, the, the surfing world and and trying to sort of, um, I don't know, we just weren't sure if we'd be welcome, basically, because who are we to kind of make a film about, you know, this, these guys' passions. But actually, everyone's been totally on board. They, then they're all kind of really in, into the idea. Everyone we've interviewed, all the places we've met and people we've spoken to, have been really into the idea of this project being made and sort of see a kind of value to it and you're looking forward. The, the forward of it? Um, most of the people that we've met actually have been, they, they kind of get excited about the idea of a big company coming in. There's... Um, there's a lot of work going on at the moment with um, sort of the grassroots of surfing to try and kind of get it tighter together. There's been different organisations through surfing who have kind of come and, and gone for various reasons. And actually the idea that you know, there, there could be big sponsors coming in to help those kind of new organisations come up through, I think is quite exciting. And, and so Ford very much see this as being the first step of, of them coming into the surfing world. So. Um, I don't know, maybe we just become spin doctors for them, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, they, they want to be involved, obviously, to sell cars, but, you know, they, they, it seems kind of a good route in for them. Um, and interestingly, the last time I was down in um, Newquay at Fistral Beach, I saw five S-Maxes in the car park, which <laughs> I'd never noticed an S-Max before the project, but <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, so I'll show you um, a couple other bits. Um, actually, there's... Uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, all right, so I'm um, probably I've got I think three more that I'll uh, I'll show you. Um, uh, yeah, I can. I tell. Well, if I just focus on um, a couple then. Um, yeah, so as well as the actual um, the webisodes, we're releasing little snippets from the film. So kind of unedited. We're trying not to kind of. Um, we're, we're trying not to make anything or put anything out that would suggest low production values. It's more just here's some, you know, some stuff that we did. It's so one of the things with surfing films is that actually guys kind of craft three, three to four minute surf videos over the space of sort of months, three, four, five, six months, and actually they're beautiful. A lot of them, and they've kind of got such high sort of production values. But a lot of the time, it's just sort of guys surfing on a wave, and so. Um, yeah, you know, I get kind of a bit bored of that, and like to see people talking a bit as well. So that's that's where we're coming at it. Um, but this is this is the the current um, episode that's out at the moment. So this is episode one. Uh, oh, can't I blow it up? Sorry. The word that 
paint and some other guys are gonna hunt out of the river. What? It's just uh, a big uh, surfing community happening with this surfers block on this point just to watch these other guys do what nobody had done before we hadn't really heard about. <laughs> guys didn't have a whole quiver of surfboards in those days and uh, nobody was expecting to ride big waves so why would they have a big wave surfboard lying around? They were basically 10 foot boards which was the average for the time and of course one pin on the back. No need to slack her up and no, 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 just wax it up. No wetsuits, just uh, rule, rule the balls. Paddle out, paddle out there, take off. Mick <coughs> actually took three complete waves. He also took the biggest wave. <laughs> and he always drove the guy the biggest wave. That was Pink on the big, big yeah, left hand. Johnny McElroy, he took a left hand taking a really long way on the inside for, on the takeoff, so it really walled up in front of him and he went flying along and put it on the screen. And just as the whole thing started warming up, we start slowly oozing up, just makes it boom at the top. Yeah. Not exactly a clean kick out, but it was a hairy wave because wow. it was in very close to the rock at the time it pulled out. One of the surfers, Jack, he got caught inside by, uh, by a set and then went and scratched it up, frantically <laughs> trying to make the top of the wave. No, got him. And it's so cool. myself and my friend Robin rescued from that gully down below in two hearts rather than our jacket. So that will make you swim to save his life. The standard of like big wave surfing in Britain now is just booming. But that was the first big wave session in, in the UK. That was really the beginning of when big waves were first noticed. And uh, it was just an uh, amazing experience to, to watch. They'd all gone out there, they'd done it, they'd done their best to varying degrees and set a standard, you know. I mean, first time in my life I'd actually seen in real life big wave driven. We've been kind of obsessively kind of refreshing hit rates and things to see how many views we're getting on all the channels. So that's another one as well there that we can uh, that we can claim. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, I mean that. No, so that's that's episode one. We've got. Um, I mean, just look, so the all the, the various films that we've got here. These are mostly just um, little snippets, essentially. Um, so yeah, just various different bits and pieces we've done. But that's yeah, that's the first episode. And the next one will be going live probably in about two weeks. So. But yeah, I can. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, it's every three weeks there's going to be. Um, so we always said there'd be eight. So we're counting the teaser as one, and um, we'll have six other episodes, and then a seventh that'll be maybe an official trailer or maybe sort of behind the scenes or some. No, no, no. We're very keen not to release the whole film, so there's still something for people to sort of go and go and see. But hello. Um, what do you think it is about this particular project? That that has made it a success. Do you think it's kind of the content or your guys' approach to it? I think, um, I mean, me and Matt came came to the project obviously with a very different outlook to, to most of the sort of the people that are making films, um, surf films anyway. And I mean, realistically, I think there's something like three or four hundred thousand surfers in the UK, but um, but the actual kind of surfing world, I think, is probably quite sort of small. But 
we we very much wanted to sort of find out about the characters and the people and the stories and and people are into that and the magazines do sort of write about it um but no one had actually kind of put much of it on film and it just seemed kind of a, a good time to be doing it as well so